So with this uh, census, health care plan is mandated by the U.S. government. Is the U.S. government now forming their own insurance company? So now the people will have to go to the to that insurance company, and then that insurance company will let the people know how much money they have to pay a month. Because well, right now it's 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 uh, invisible. There there is no no insurance company for the people to go to to find out how much it is that they're going to have to pay for this. Well, There's no that's, policy. That's where the I think the exchanges will will serve as that if you want to call it an insurance program in the states, they will be required or asked to set up an exchange. And if they decide some states have said that they're not going to, then the federal government will come in and, and create a plan for you. Um, so in a sense, I guess you could say that they're acting as an insurance company. Um, our biggest concern, or one of our biggest concerns, is you have folks who have health care plans right now paid right. for by their company. Mm-hmm. They're going to be told, well, we're dumping you, we're putting you in the exchange, which is they're not. They, there's a good chance they may not get the same quality of care, they may not get the same benefits, and the biggest piece is they are likely to have to pay more. And some people will say, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, it is a problem because we paid with years of service for these benefits and now we're not getting them and you're asking us to continue to pay more yeah yeah really i can see the problem there so does protectseniors.org do you uh, i mean do you act as legal counsel how how do you work with those individuals well we have uh, our only recourse is to get legislation passed that would yeah. require these contracts to be upheld and that's what we're working very hard to do. Uh, again, like everything else, until the Supreme Court ruled things, it was a tough. It was tough going uh, because everyone was tired with health care. They said, "I'm tired. We just did this. We're not going to do it again. We're going to wait till what the Supreme Court does." Now that the Supreme Court act has acted, our hope is that now we get through this election cycle, both parties will come to the table in 2013 and figure out that. This change that needs to be made, this change needs to be made, and let's fix some of that. But we also have to add new ideas because we're, the budget problems aren't getting any better. We just can't dump 14.3 million people onto to Medicare and say, okay, we've done our job now. Yeah, because right. if Medicare is in such a problem as it is, <laughs> you put 14.3 million or even a fraction of that on Medicare today, and Medicare is bankrupt tomorrow. My goodness. So why couldn't this all have been worked out before the vote? Well, this could have been, uh, but again, po- politics in, in this town has uh, been very hyper-partisan. Um, it's probably the worst I've seen in the 19 years I've been here. And so it's going to take um, some cooler heads, some real leadership on both sides of the aisle. Both parties are going to have to say, i got to let Republicans win here, i got to let Democrats do- win here. And, and let's sort out the, the, the issues that we can all agree on first. Let's pass those, and then let's save the issues we don't agree for another day, and let's let's really have the, dis- the debate and discussion on those smaller, fewer people. We agree on more than we disagree on. And when, our message that we have to take and other groups like us have to take to Congress is time is now. We're tired of it, and we're going to, if you don't do what the country is asking, you're going to pay for it at the ballot box. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. When, whenever there's an issue that is split down partisan lines. I've often thought that the reason for that must be because it doesn't affect the elected officials. Is that the case here? Do they have their own little... Because you hear that... I don't, I don't know what to believe in the email. You know, you get these email things that get circulated. Does does Congress and... I mean, do they have their own little package so that this doesn't even apply to them? Is that why they're no, so... They, they, again, I will tell you, they have a nice package, um, but they do have to. They ha- they have to. This has to apply to them. I mean, they're not getting these golden parachutes like everybody thinks that they are. The, but they do have a nice insurance package, and and but it, they are they do fall under the new law. The the one thing that is, is uh, when I worked with uh, seniors for a while, for three years, I worked at an assisted living facility, and I would drive them to the doctor. It was part of my, what I did. Mm-hmm. And one, there was one couple um, that had, there were, there were snowbirds. And they would be down here in the winter. They'd be up, by, I think, in Connecticut in the summer. And the, because the laws were different between the states, they had certain medications they could get in Connecticut. Or, or I think it was a blood transfusion in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And they had to take a pill down here or vice versa, one or the other. And the pill was like $1,000 for one pill. Yeah, it was unbelievable, and 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 uh, I guess he had the insurance to cover it. But I'm guessing right now, I mean, what you're talking about is some of these people who uh, fall between the cracks, or maybe they were promised something from their their former uh, job, 
and now they're, it's being reneged on. I mean, how, well, they're going to be left high and dry. Particularly those uh, folks who said, looked a few years ago and said, my pension's pretty healthy, and you know what, I'm going to get my company has promised, and, and part of my contract was I'm going to get health care when I retire. So I can retire early. They're not Medicare eligible. Okay. Now, now your pension is not doing so well. Um, company just cut your your health care benefits. Now, what do you do? Yeah, um, you're out of pocket now, and that's problematic for a number of. And I know there's there's a, within the health care law, there's some things that take you the, re, the retiree reinsurance program and things like that. But that money's already been used up. That's not going to. There's no more money going to be appropriated for that program. So. Um, there are going to be a lot of people out high and dry unless we, we make the changes that us and, and other groups are suggesting. Okay, and those changes will, would come through the legislature? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, since the um, taxpayers pay the salaries of all of the elected officials, will the elected officials see a percentage decrease in their salaries so that way, this way, the American people... Uh, can afford their own insurance because right now through the taxes the American people are paying the elected officials salaries and and you won't see that I mean you see over and over there's uh, always a proposed increase in those salaries and some people say well, we got to vote no on that and, and, and sometimes they do but in most cases they do get those pay raises and, and it is problematic I mean when you talk about the exchange and if you have you like your current health care program the president has always said if you like your doctor you can keep that in, in principle, that's true, but your doctor may not decide to keep you and right. based on all these new changes. So what you know, we're telling Congress is, you know what, if we want our doctor and our doctor doesn't want us, you should have to do that. Let, let, you, let you live by our same standards. Why don't you come walk in my shoes for a week? Let me kick you out of your health care program. <laughs> exactly. uh, we had a member of Congress tell us that you, during this whole health care debate that you would be better on Medicaid than you would in the government exchanges, and that's sad. Mm-hmm. So, when, so when you referred to earlier for contracts, is Medicare technically a, a contract, and that can be changed from what it is today? Well, I mean, they're looking at trying to change Medicare to keep it solvent for beyond the years that it's expected to to expire or, or go bankrupt. Um, but I wouldn't say that's the contract. Our contract is with the, the companies and, and the groups that we worked for for twenty, thirty, forty years. Uh, we made you healthy. We're not looking to bankrupt the company, and, and some of the, one of the arguments was as well. If we continue to pay these benefits, um, you'll, we'll go bankrupt. Well, no, we have no vested interest in you going bankrupt. We have a vested interest in you being healthy. The healthier you are, yeah, really. our benefits continue. So we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that you're healthy. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure that this legislation and this language is is is, is good for you. Um, but we do believe a contract is a contract, and. In today's society, we seem to have gotten away from that, and okay. you know we just break deals when we want to. Well, I, your your mission is so clear now. Uh, as a, you know, I'm glad you were able to explain this to us.